Do you see all the people standing in line? 10시부터 입장이 가능하다고 해서 지금 아직 9시 42분이거든요. 근데 벌써 사람들이 엄청 많이 와 있어요. Where is this place and why are so many people standing in line to enter? This is the Coffee Expo Seoul 2024. But why is the Diplomat Talks team here? Let me show you the reason why. Nudi, what is it? 드디어 열리네요. What? 2024년 서울 커피 엑스포요. Oh, you must like coffee. 아 그게 아니라. Not that. 아 톡톡님 기억 안 나요? Remember what? 아니 올해 서울 커피 엑스포 주빈국이 어떤 나라인지 기억 안 나냐고요. Oh, which country was it? 벌써 까먹으신 거예요? Where was it? 바로 이 나라요. 루완다였어요. You guys, do you remember? When we were doing our one-of-a-kind calendar project earlier this year, the Rwandan ambassador gave us a little heads up. He said that Rwanda will participate as the official guest country at the Coffee Expo Seoul to be held in March. I remember now. This is why we are here today, the Coffee Expo Seoul 2024. <gasps> Hi to my camera! Hi! <laughs> we just opened? We just opened. We just opened? Yeah, okay. Yeah. It looks like it'll take some time until the booth is ready. So let me tell you a little bit about the Coffee Expo Seoul. Coffee Expo Seoul 2024, hosted by Quex and the Korea Coffee Association, is the largest coffee exhibition held in Korea in the first half of the year. Here, you can take a look at all products related to the coffee industry, including coffee beans, coffee machines, desserts, packaging supplies, as well as latest coffee trends. This year's theme was Coffee for Better Tomorrow with around 250 companies and 800 booths participating. Over 46,000 people visited the expo that was held over four days. Ambassador! And a familiar face we ran into here. Thank you. Say hi to my camera. Hi. <laughs> the Ambassador of Rwanda. So today is a special day for mm -hmm. us. We are the country hosts at the Coes Coffee Expo mm -hmm. 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an opportunity for us to share more about the different coffees we have in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Right. As the ambassador just said, Rwanda is the official guest country of the Coffee Expo Seoul 2024. Every year, Coffee Expo Seoul selects one coffee producing country as the guest of honor. This is to promote the guest country's coffee culture in Korea and provide the country with opportunities to expand their business in Korea. So you're really the only official guest country of this coffee expo, right? Yes, we are. Mm. We are. We are. Mm. It's uh, every every year uh, the the COEX and the Coffee Association select one country mm -hmm. that becomes the country host. Mm. So you are set up in a booth. Mm. 
you're able to bring in uh, all your coffee products, but also all related all items related to coffee, like tea, uh, honey, and other items that uh, the country must ha might have to share. Rwanda is the sole official guest country for the Coffee Expo Seoul 2024. So, we decided to find out more about Rwandan coffee with the ambassador. I have so many questions for you. Really? Yes. So first, how did Rwanda select it as the official guest country for this Coffee Expo? So it was a very inter interesting process. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very much excited to see that there was an open beat. Mm -hmm to select the country host and uh, we did the application and uh, we did it in partnership with uh, our National Agriculture Export Board and we sent a proposal as the embassy to COEX and the Coffee Association and luckily we were selected this year. Was it like competitive? It was very competitive uh, of course because there's so many countries growing coffee and this is one of the biggest expo in the world. It's the biggest coffee expo in Korea, but also in the world. So it was really a good opportunity for all countries having anything to do with the co coffee sector. It could be equipment, it could be um, coffee, tea, honey. And we really wanted in our focus in the next three years to really expand our export to Korea. So we saw this as a major opportunity and likely we were able to win. Why do you think Rwanda won? First of all, I think our application was appealing. Uh, we have many varieties of coffee. It's a high altitude coffee, uh, Arabica mostly. Just a minute everyone. Why is good coffee grown in Rwanda? Are you curious? Let's find out together. The area between latitudes 25 degrees north and 25 degrees south along the equator is called the coffee zone or coffee belt, which refers to an area with a climate and soil suitable for growing coffee. In Africa, this region includes about 20 countries, including Rwanda, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. Coffee cultivation requires strict conditions. First of all, it needs abundant rainfall and sufficient sunlight. The area must maintain a temperature of around 20 degrees, being neither too cold nor too hot. Depending on the variety, the optimal altitude for growing coffee is approximately between 500 and 2,500 meters. High quality coffee is produced in highlands where the day and night temperature differences are large. The tropical highlands of Africa have a natural environment suitable for growing coffee. Rwandan coffee is known to have good acidity and balance as well as a fruity aroma. It's one of the best brewed coffee in the world, winning international awards such as Best of the Best and Coffee Lover's Choice in a competition that attracted brands from nine countries around the world. It's praised as a specialty coffee. So Korea being a culture uh, that has a lot of uh, coffee drinking, meeting around a coffee, it became a natural for us to have different proposals, including our organic honey and uh, green tea. So did you prepare anything special as the guest of honor for this coffee expo? Essentially, there were, there, there were three parts. Uh, the first part was to ensure that we have a booth that is appealing. And I think we've tried to do our best to get to that. Uh, the second item was to ensure that we have a variety of coffee, different coffees that are from Rwanda, and also the companies that go, goes with it, and ensure also that our agricultural board, who are the specialists on coffee, on tea, and tea, and honey, are able to give us all the support that is required. And then the last item was to ensure that we talk to the coffee, coffee association, we talk to the different importers in Korea, so they can come visit the booth, and ensure that uh, they try our coffee. If you look at our section, we have a display area. We also have a cupping area where different coffees are being tested mm -hmm. and companies are buying immediately. Mm -hmm. So, so far I think we've, uh, we've been able to have uh, two contracts of uh, importers from Korea that are going to buy coffee from Rwanda just from the cupping, cupping session that happened uh, yesterday. So you said you brought a variety of coffee from Rwanda. Yes. Which one do you recommend? It's, it's, it's difficult, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Coffee, it's a very um, interesting business. And depending on the way the beans have matured and are roasted and have been packaged and shipped, the taste changes. But what I can say is, based on international standards, Rwanda has high-grade coffee. 
it's really good quality coffee. So how important is coffee cultivation in Rwanda? It's very important. Uh, first of all, Rwanda is known for having high-grade coffee. Uh, we have uh, volcanic soils, we have very good soils, we, we are high in altitude, so it creates a certain specialty coffee uh, that is being produced. And I hear that uh, the beans this year are very, very good, uh, very good quality. It generates enough revenue for many families uh, to live, though it's less and less the main source of income uh, in Rwanda. Rwanda is now most of a, mostly a service uh, economy, uh, but it still has uh, an importance in terms of uh, what we're exporting and uh, the charm that Rwanda has to offer uh, when you visit Rwanda or when you take a little bit of Rwanda, like in Korea right now, by drinking the coffee. Coffee has become Rwanda's most important export since it was introduced by the Germans in the early 1990s. Currently, 400,000 small-scale farmers make a living by producing coffee. 97% of Rwanda's coffee production is Arabica, and Robusta accounts for 3%. Coffee is a major export crop continuously supported by the Rwandan government. It was one of the country's top 10 most produced items from 1961 to 2018. Coffee also plays an important role in Rwanda's national economy, contributing significantly to foreign exchange earnings and monetization of the rural economy. As of 2021, coffee contributed an average of 24% of Rwanda's agricultural exports over the last decade. For reference, agriculture is an important industry contributing 26% of Rwanda's GDP. As of 2019, the largest export market for Rwandan coffee is the US, followed by Germany, Sweden, the United Kingdom, Italy, Belgium, and Japan. According to a December 2022 report by Rwanda's National Agricultural Export Development Board, or NAEB, Rwanda's coffee exports increased by about 2%, from 17,479 tons in 2021 to 17,848 tons in 2022. However, rising wholesale coffee prices led export revenues to increase by 34% to more than $105 million in 2022, from around $78.3 million in 2021. So you've noticed already that Koreans love drinking coffee. So do Rwandans drink a lot of coffee too? First, when uh, the coffee business started, the coffee uh, planting, it was mostly exported. Mm -hmm. But today, if you go to Kigali, you'll have a lot of coffee shops. Uh, so the culture of drinking coffee is growing, though we're still far from being a, a, co a coffee culture like in Korea. Korea drinks a lot, drink a lot of coffee. And what I like with Seoul is that all meetings are done around a coffee. As the ambassador just mentioned, Korea's love for coffee is famous around the world. So let's find out through some statistics. Korea's annual coffee consumption per capita for 2023 was 405 cups, which is about 2.6 times the world's per capita annual coffee consumption of 152 cups. Taking a look at some other statistics, in 2021, Korea's per capita coffee consumption amount was 2.44 kilograms. What about Rwandans? How much do you think they consumed? It was 0.02 kilograms. According to statistical data on coffee imports, Korea ranked 11th in coffee imports by country in 2022. Korea's coffee imports account for 2.7% of global coffee imports. So, how is Rwanda analyzing the Korean coffee market? So, the coffee market for us in Korea is very interesting. Uh, first of all, in terms of uh, the appreciation of specialty coffee, uh, high-grade coffee. So, it's really an opportunity for us to introduce more of the Rwandan coffee. We have companies like Spell and the Terra Rosa, which are already bringing beans from Rwanda and selling, selling them out. And we want to multiply that with other uh, importers. We really see an, a great opportunity uh, to partner 
with the Korean uh, market and bring more of the Rwandan coffee. And uh, it's a market that is already mature. One, the coffee is appreciated. Two, it's already being consumed. So it's very easy for us to find people who can uh, appreciate and import coffee and get a little bit of Rwanda in Seoul and entire South Korea. So what is your next plan to promote Rwandan coffee in Korea? So today we, we've seen a lot of traffic on the booth. Uh, yesterday the line were, was very long. Uh, we're now looking at uh, first immediately having uh, agreements through the different companies that are here. That's one. But two, we also want to understand what uh, roasting profile that Koreans prefer. Uh, two, how many tonnage can be brought uh, to, to Korea. That's why we have uh, someone from the National Agriculture Export Board who's here and engaging uh, with different importers to understand what are the demands. And we also have the private sector that are doing deals. So there's a short term deals during this uh, coffee expo. There's the mid term to try and understand what is the market requirement, how we can improve the products, etc. And then the long term is for the agriculture board to see uh, how we can set up a, 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 to make all the uh, incentive between Korea and Rwanda to ensure that uh, uh, there's a flow of products coming from Rwanda to the Korean market. After interviewing the ambassador, we didn't want to leave the coffee expo. So, we decided to take a closer look at the Luanda booth. Luanda coffee에 대한 모든 것을 알고 계시는 분이 계시다고 하셔서 그분에게 질문을 해보려고 합니다. 그분이 바로 여기 계시거든요. Hi. Hi. Could you say hi to hi. camera? I heard that you know everything about Rwanda products. Is that true? Uh, we can say yes, but also not everything. Better not say everything? we know. We know what we produce. We know our coffee. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So you know everything. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But you know everything about the product here, right? Yes, yes. we know everything. So let's go around and look at some products. Better Shall show we go? you around. Okay, this way. let's go. Yeah. There are a lot yeah. of Koreans. We're yes. interested in like Rwanda coffee, coffee, right? Yes. Mm. Thanks to the Coffee Expo, more Koreans got to know about Rwandan coffee. Why do you think Koreans are interested in Rwandan coffee so much? Because they want to explore new origin, new taste. So the taste of Africa is brought here by Rwandan coffee today. Even if Rwanda is ported they already in Korean coffee, but it's not too much famous like other, like Colombia, like Ethiopia, and the other origins. So this is an opportunity to expand the Rwanda coffee on Korean market. So they have to test, so they know it, and tomorrow they can go in different coffee shop in Seoul asking, I want a Rwanda coffee. Yes. I decided to try some Rwandan coffee too. Can you try this for me and tell me what you think? Yes? What do you smell? It smells really good. Yes. Very fruity. Fruity because it's fruity. because natural coffee, natural mm -hmm. processed coffee. Oh. oh, it's not bitter at all. No. Oh, it's very sweet. Yes. And fruity. Yes. It has a variety of taste. When I tried it, the first thought that came to mind was that it was very fresh. No, the feeling is good. It makes it makes me happy. Yes, <laughs> thank you. There was also a subtle taste of fresh fruit and chocolate. The secret in this is to harvest ripe cherries, where you have a lot of sugars, which trans uh, can caramelize and give this caramel aroma. Yeah. Very clean, very clean. Hello, everyone. I'm Ali from TV. I wondered what other Koreans thought after tasting Rwandan coffee. This is the expo. Wasso, chul kilgo. 신기해가지고 생소해서 음. 한번 마셔봤어요. 음. 어떠셨어요? 
하나는 되게 깔끔하고 하나는 이제 또 향도 많이 나면서 좀 마시기 편한 커피. 음. 전체적으로 산미랑 이런 게좀 밸런스가 좀 있어서 좋았던 음. 것 같아요. 원래도 자주 드셔 보셨어요? 로한다는 이제 한 종류 이제 부산제 종류만 먹어봤는데 뭐 다른 거를 먹어봤는데 다른 것도 괜찮았던 것 같아요. 되게 부산제만 먹었던 날들이 조금 후회가 되는 느낌이 조금 있네요. 근데 그 전에도 로한다 커피 드셔 보셨어요? 아니요 처음이에요. 처음이에요. 네. 혹시 루, 로한다라는 나라는 알고 계셨나요? 어 들어는 봤죠. 음. 근데 솔직히 말해서 아프리카 어딘가에 있다 이것만 알고 뭐 다른 거는 잘은 몰라요. 어 근데 이제 커피숍 가면 이제 나라별로 이제 싱글 오리진 네. 커피들이 있잖아요. 네. 이제 그래서 거기서 저는 주로 이제 에티오피아랑 케냐 많이 마시는데 로한다는 이제 한 번씩 또 도전해 볼 만한 음. 커피라고 생각해요. Thanks to the Coffee Expo. Many Koreans were able to find out about Rwandan coffee. I heard that the Rwandan booth has prepared a fun session for coffee fans, so I am waiting to participate. Cupping is the process of evaluating the quality of coffee and testing its essential taste to find objectivity. It is said to be an essential process in coffee making. I don't know much about coffee, but I decided to participate in cupping just for today. The first step in cupping is tasting. You have to slurp and inhale like this, which is called slurping. This is to help you feel the rich taste and aroma of the coffee. It is my first time doing this, so I'm a bit clumsy. It wasn't easy, still, it was an interesting experience. I decided to listen to the thoughts of others who participated in cupping with me. 그 루안다 커피라는 걸 해보셨는데 어떠셨어요? 실제로 해보니까 어, 조금 그 원두에 대해서 어, 향이라든지 맛을 조금 진지하게 임할 수 있는 기회인 것 같아서 되게 재밌었어요. 루안다라는 나라에 대해서는 그 전에 알고 계셨는지 궁금해요. 아프리카 그리고 이제 커피 재배지라는 것만 알고 있었고 저렇게 많은 활동을 하는 나라인지는 사실 잘 몰랐습니다. 아프리카 원두하면 딱 에티오피아밖에 생각이 안 나는데 오늘 마셔보니까 나중에 이제 메뉴 볼때 루완다를 좀더 많이 볼것 같아요. In addition to Rwandan coffee, we were able to see other products from Rwanda at the coffee expo. Wow. We have honey. And one of the most popular products was this, Rwandan honey. This Nikesi honey uh -huh. is grown toward the west north of the country, uh -huh. around in a chain of mountain forests, uh -huh. around 2,200 meters above sea level. This honey is natural organic honey, no additive, nothing, pure honey 100%. So it's available and uh, can be exported to Korean market. This is Rwandan eucalyptus honey. In addition to coffee, Koreans were also very interested in honey. There were many people buying it. Let me try Rwandan honey. It is really good. Doesn't my face say it all? So what kind of market is Korea for the Rwandan coffee industry? I met an expert at the Coffee Expo who could answer this question. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Alexis Ngorunziza. Mm. I work for National Agriculture Export Development Board, mm. which is the government institution in charge of agriculture exports. Mm. Is this your first time in Korea? It is the first time. Why is it your first time in Korea? Because I know that we import a lot of raw and coffee. I can say it's not a lot. Mm.
Korea's coffee imports exceeded 1 billion U.S. dollars for the first time in 2022, reaching 1.3 billion dollars. This amount is an increase of more than 40 percent compared to the previous year. In the same year, Korea's coffee imports exceeded 200,000 tons, which is enough for each adult to consume 1.3 cups per day. Korea imports the most coffee from Brazil, followed by Vietnam, Colombia, Ethiopia, and the U.S. The amount of coffee imported from these five countries accounts for 70% of Korea's total coffee import volume. Relatively little coffee is imported from Rwanda, as of 2022, the amount of Rwandan coffee imported into Korea is approximately 338 tons, or 0.16% of total imports. However, coffee is a very important trade item between Korea and Rwanda. This is because 75% of Korea's imports from Rwanda are coffee. Meanwhile, Korea's main export items to Rwanda include pesticides and pharmaceuticals, fisheries, and automobiles. The volume of trade between Korea and Rwanda, which had remained below the $1 million level until 2007, exceeded $9 million for the first time in 2008 and rose to $28 million the following year. The volume of trade between the two countries peaked at $70 million in 2017 and has been fluctuating near the $10 million level. How do you analyze in Korean market? They know coffee. Yeah. Most of the Koreans love good coffees. Yeah. And Rwanda offer very good quality coffee. So I think uh, Korea uh, market, we can work together because what they want is what we have. So we can make deals. We have started with a few portion, but now we can expand. We are together with uh, very big exporters here in the, this uh, coffee sale expo. So we want to uh, work with other importing companies. We can offer good quality coffee. At the coffee expo, I was also able to meet someone who works for a Rwandan coffee company that wants to expand its market presence into Korea. Well, actually, it's our first time in Korea, and uh, our coffee is not that known in Korea, so we are just here to promote the brand as a great opportunity as we were given to come here to present or to showcase our products in Korea. Korea market, we believe, it's a consumers who are knowledgeable with a high knowledge about coffee. So we just want to give them a new experience to experience our, our coffee, which is known to be the best coffee. I think there is a lot of potential for Korea and Rwanda to cooperate in the future regarding coffee. Everyone, how did you like today's episode of Diploma Talks? It felt like I was on a coffee trip to Luanda, seeing how the coffee that we drink every day serves as a bridge that can closely connect two countries as far away as Korea and Rwanda. Everyday items like coffee feels very special. How about trying a cup of Rwandan coffee today? To visit Rwanda, we have three parks. Uh, in the east, there's a safari-like park with all the big uh, five. Uh, in the northwest, we have uh, the gorilla, the big gorillas. And then in the southern uh, west, we have a thick jungle where you have a different type of phone, including birds. So really, it's an invitation to visit Rwanda.